Hello, everybody. So we're going to do our first lesson here. I'm going to record these. And then, uh, like I said in the email, I uh, hope to set up some kind of a conference ability uh, so that you could contact me. You can ask me questions directly. Uh, of course, you can always email me, uh, that sort of thing. Um, I'll see if I can also set up like a discussion board where you guys can share ideas with each other and, uh, and I'll try to check on that too. And somehow we'll try to figure out a way to work through this. So this block of material um, is all about angular momentum, okay? And angular momentum is very much like linear momentum, um, except with a twist, uh, literally. So with regular momentum, if we've got two objects coming together, boom, boom, all right, then we expect that whatever initial momentum we have, in the end, we're going to have that momentum too. And we represent that with the equations that you can see there, PI and PF. All right. Well, if we think just about one object by itself, we could say something might change its momentum. And if we do that, then we talk about the impulse of the object. And that's the integral of FDT. With angular momentum, it's the same sort of thing. So we could have two things that are rotating, okay, or maybe just one is rotating, and it's going to engage with the second object, and they're going to rotate together. So however much stuff we had rotating initially, that's what we're going to have in the end, okay? Now we use the symbol H, so we say H initial is equal to H final, and you can see that there um, as well. And that's a vector quantity, so our object could be rotating like this, okay, or it might rotate around some other direction like that. And we'll use the right-hand rule to define that rotation. So if I'm here, then my rotation is this way, the direction of my thumb. If I'm over here, then my rotation is this way, the direction of my thumb. Is that just how it's going to work? Now, just like we have impulse with linear momentum, we also have impulse with angular momentum, and you can see that down there, okay? So now one place that we begin to see a difference though is how we actually compute the linear momentum versus the angular momentum. Now the linear momentum is always going to be given by mv, okay? It's a vector quantity. So we say that p is equal to mv, just like that. How come it's not on your... Are you kidding me? Let me try this. Sorry about this, guys. A little technical glitch. Okay. Hey, all right. I think I think we got the situation covered now. Okay, so here's what I was trying to write. So our momentum is mv. It's a vector quantity, uh, of course. Now, with angular momentum, all right, there's a couple ways to do it. And the first way I'm going to show you is kind of the big kid way of doing it, all right? And that is to say that our angular momentum H is equal to an inertial term, this time called the moment of inertia, not mass, um, times a velocity vector, an angular velocity, okay? Well, that's a little more advanced. We're going to get into that maybe a little bit later, but not right now. Right now, the way we're going to talk about our angular momentum is by saying that it's a location vector crossed with a momentum vector. So we'll use a cross product to take care of that. All right. So let's get into our first example here. How come I didn't pull over? Sorry, I'm having some technical glitches here.
Okay. We we may have to come back to this, guys. Hang on just a second. I don't I don't know why it's sharing in a weird way for some reason. So let me just interrupt this. 